Hi, welcome to Incomplete Data Analysis Week 2. Today, or in this part, we will be looking at more formal definitions of the missing data mechanism. So, to recap, in the last week, amongst other things, we have learned the concepts of missing data pattern and of missing data mechanism. The missing data pattern gives us insight about the location of the missing values in our data set, but does not provide us any information about why the data are missing. In contrast, the missing data mechanism can be regarded of as a statistical model that describes the probability that a variable is observed or missing. We have learned three missing data mechanisms missing completely at random or MCAR, missing at random or MAR, and missing not at random or MNAR. We have learned that under the missing completely at random assumption, the probability of a missing value is unrelated to the data, either the observed or missing data. We have looked at a particular example where we had two variables, the BMI and the blood glucose levels, and some BMI values were missing. Under the MCAR assumption, it means that the probability that a BMI value is missing is completely unrelated to the BMI values themselves or to the blood glucose levels. So, for instance, those individuals whose BMI is missing are no more likely to be obese or underweight or to have very high or very low glucose values than those with the BMI observed. Then we move to missing at random that says that the probability that a value is missing depends on the observed data but it's further unrelated to the missing values themselves and under our example it means that for instance those with um, high blood glucose levels might be more likely to have their BMI missing, but then the probability that the BMI is missing is unrelated to the BMI values themselves. And finally, missing not at random says that the probability of a missing value depends on the missing values themselves, and in addition it may depend on the observed data as well. And we have also seen that uh, particularly complicated case of missing not at random is where is when the dependence of the missing values is related to a variable that we have not measured at all in our data set and again in the context of the particular example that we were studying missing not at random would imply that for instance those with um, a very high uh, weight may be more likely to have their BMI missing, for instance. Or, for instance, imagine that uh, the probability of a BMI value being missing depends on the glucose levels. In our case, because glucose levels is measured, this would be a MAR situation, but if we add no information about the glucose levels, then this would be that particular form of MNAR because we would have missing values on BMI and those would be related with the glucose levels that under this hypothetical situation we had no information in our data set. And today, as I've said, I will be explaining or providing some more formal description of the missing data mechanisms that will be useful uh, during the course. And to do so, I need to introduce some notation and terminology, and I will start with the, complete, the notion of complete uh, data that consists of the values that we would have obtained if there were no missing values and we denote it by Y capital and of course the complete data is partially uh, an hypothetical quantity because some of its values may be missing and we further partition Y in its observed and missing components and that's what we have here. 
and now the crucial variable will be the missingness indicator which we will be denoting by r it's the common the sorry it's the common notation in the literature and assuming that our uh, data matrix has dimension n times p where n is the number of rows and stands for the number of subjects in our data set and p is the number of variables that we have measured and are represented in the columns then uh, the missingness indicator for subject for the measurement of subject i on variable j takes the value 1 if the corresponding y value has been observed and 0 if it's missing. So in reality r is the uh, no missingness indicator and as we can appreciate r it it's giving us the missing data pattern, right? Because R will be a matrix composed of zeros and ones. So it gives us exactly the location of the missing values in our data set. And the missing data mechanism is a model for the conditional distribution of the missingness indicator given the data. And we denote it by f of r given y and psi where uh, r and y in lower cases stand for particular values that might be taken by uh, capital r and y which we assume to be random variables and psi is the parameter of the missing data mechanism for instance it can be the probability of success in a Bernoulli distribution in the case where we only have one variable with uh, missing values and psi is usually unknown and we will see that this is somehow when we need to learn about psi somehow complicates our life but this is later in this video okay so also remember that we can partition uh, y in its observed and missing value, so we can write this as also r given y observed, y miss and psi. This should be bold, but uh, the y observed and y miss should be bold, but I cannot do bolds here. But okay, main point is this is the general expression for the missing data mechanism and this denotes that the probability of r given the data so the probability of the missing data pattern given the data and let us see what uh, this uh, what different missing mechanisms imply about this uh, expression. So let us start with missing completely at random. We know that under missing completely at random, the probability that uh, a value is missing or the probability of the missing data pattern is unrelated to the data at all. So basically we can suppress the dependence on Y and this simplifies to just the probability of the missing data pattern given some parameter psi which can be interpreted as the overall probability of missingness so and they're missing completely at random this um, expression of the missing data mechanism simplifies greatly and uh, something that uh, it has already been noted in um, the video about the missing data mechanisms is, is that the essential feature of missing completely at random uh, is that the observed data can be regarded as a random sample of the complete data and this implies that the distributions of the observed and uh, complete uh, the distributions of the observed data and of the complete data are similar and further that distributions of the observed and missing values are also uh, similar and also we can uh, to a certain extent a test for the missing completely at random assumption or basically otherwise stated we can try to rule out that data are missing at random and we have seen in the particular example of the blood glucose and um, BMI that what we can do to to check this is we have the data set right we have the 
in the context of the BMI and of the glucose level, some BMI values are missing, some are observed. We can look at the corresponding groups of the glucose levels. And if these two groups, the glucose levels for those individuals who have the BMI missing and the glucose levels for those individuals who have the BMI recorded are very different, this means that the BMI is somehow affected by the glucose levels and so it's not unrelated to the data. So what we are trying to do, we are trying to rule out uh, missing at random. And here we only have two variables, but if we had more variables and for instance, just missing on one variable, so if we had here a further uh, variable, let's say H also observed, we also need to check that the two groups induced by the missingness on BMI are uh, similar uh, as well. But this only rules out missing at random, but there is no way that we can rule out missing not at random because this would imply uh, looking at the missing values that we do not have. So we can somehow check missing completely at random against missing at random, but we can never rule out missing not at random. So we can only partially verify missing completely at random. Okay, now if we move to the missing at random case, we know that uh, when data are missing at random, it does not depend on the observed data. And so if we remember that we can write this as and we know that the probability of our missing data pattern under missing at random does not depend on the missing values and so it simplifies to this uh, expression. And we have noted that um, also uh, an essential feature of MAR is that when we conditioning on the observed variables within the strata defined by the observed variables, the missing data is missing completely at random. Again, on our glucose levels example, if we define strata of individuals whose glucose levels are similar, within this strata, the probability that an individual has his BMI value missing or observed, it's the same for all individuals. And if we had more variables, for instance, glucose level and age, it means that if we define strata based on glucose levels and age, for instance, those who have glucose levels between 70 and 80 and are aged between 20 and 30, and then another group glucose levels between 70 and 80 and age uh, 30 and 40 and so on and so forth for the different strut that we can define based on glucose levels and age. Within these groups, the probability that an individual has his BMI value missing is the same as for any other individual, okay? And uh, we have also learned that missing at random is an unverifiable assumption. We cannot check uh, whether it's valid or not from our observed data and why, because one way to do that would be within this strata, we know that the strata defined by the observed variables, we know that the data are missing completely at random. So we could look at the distributions of those with observed values and those with missing values and look whether they are similar or not. But because we do not have the information about the missing values, we cannot check whether they are similar or not. So um, MAR, uh, it's unverifiable from our data at end. So basically we should talk to the, to the experts or look at uh, historical information to try to check whether it's a plausible assumption or not. We have to live with it somehow, as we will see, most of the methods are developed for missing at random situations, but we will learn this in due course. And finally, when data are missing not at random, we know that it depends on what is missing and it might depend as well on what is observed. And so we cannot simplify this expression. There is no simplification. And 
Uh, we have also talked about this as well, that a complicated form of missing lot at random is when missingness depends on a variable that we have not measured at all in our uh, data set. And also another point, basically missing not at random is quite literally everything that we cannot write as missing um, at random. And it's possibly the, mo uh, the most, um, it's possibly, no, it's the most general scenario. It's possibly the most realistic one and is without any doubt the most complicated one to handle as we will see later. But, uh, okay, so let us now do a small example. This is an example that uh, has appeared in a book and I do not know what is showing here. I'm not seeing this, but okay. Uh, and suppose that we have two variables, y1 and y2, and y2 can be missing. Y1 is fully observed. And because we could define, I'm suppressing the dependence on the individual, so I could define R to be R1, R2, but R1 will be always 1 because Y1 is fully observed, so let's just instead, not that it's wrong, but we don't need it, so let's just use R, which will take the value 1 if Y2 is observed and zero if y2 is missing. And now let us further suppose that our missing data mechanism can be written in the following way. So we want in this case the missing data pattern we either observe a zero or a one, right? And we know that the probability of observing a zero conditioning on the y's and the parameter of the missing data model plus the probability of observing uh, one, it should add, add up to one, right? So I know, so writing one, we have the other probability. So for instance, imagine that the probability of R2 being zero, so a missing value on Y2 given Y1, Y2, and some parameter Psi takes this form. Okay, where this psi is psi zero, psi one, psi two. Now, imagine that psi takes this value, 0 0.5, 0, 0. So this implies that the probability that y2 is missing is 0.5. So this corresponds to a missing completely at random mechanism. It does not depend on the observed data y1 or on the missing data y2. It's a constant, so it's clearly missing completely at random. Now, if I have, for instance, this implies that the probability that R2, sorry, I'm using R2, but it's in reality just R, right? In this case, it is, but because Y1 is observed, this corresponds to a MAR mechanism. And now finally, for instance, we have that the probability of R, not R2, Being zero given the data and the parameter is right, and because y2 has missing values, this is mnar. 
Okay, so we will look, uh, we will play around with this example in R in one of the next videos this week, but for now it's just to illustrate the mathematical notation of the missing data mechanisms. And before we end up um, this part, I would like to, to make um, a disclaimer or to warn you for something. I will not go into all the details, but I would like to make the point. So the previous definitions that I have presented, they are widely used in the literature. Some are more precise than others. I've tried to use the ones that I think are the most precise ones. But there are some peculiarities um, in these uh, equations. And the main one is that it is unclear whether the previous equations, they hold for the realized missing data pattern or for any possible realization of the missing data pattern. I mean, for any missing pattern or observed data that could have been realized but were not. Usually they are regarded as such as for any missing data pattern that could have been obtained but um, was not. And to make this clear, for instance, again in these two variable cases, y1, y2, now suppose that both y1 and y2 can be missing. So we have four possible patterns corresponding to the case where y1 and y2 are both observed, to the case where they are both missing and where y1 is observed and y2 is missing and y1 is missing and y2 is observed. So does this equation say, for instance, if I got the missing data pattern of one, one, both variables observe that those equations hold for that pattern specifically or for any other three patterns or any of the four possible patterns. And uh, with this in mind, several authors have proposed uh, modifications and usually they concentrate on the missing at random assumption because it's the assumption that it's underlying most of the statistical uh, methods that have been developed for missing data and in particular, Simon and co-authors in 2013, they have published a paper in the journal Statistical Science and the title of the paper is uh, what is exactly meant by missing at random and in line with this and being witty whether the equations hold for the realized pattern or any possible uh, realized pattern, they distinguish between statements that hold for any possible missing data pattern and they denominate is as everywhere missing at random or those who just hold for the realized pattern, the pattern that we observe and this leads to the what they call realized missing at random. And as a historical note, I think in Rubin's paper in 1976 when they when he gave the definition of MAR, I think he gave it for the realized um, MAR. He didn't denominate it like this, but he was having in mind the specific pattern that was um, realized. And as we can appreciate everywhere, MAR is stronger, is stronger than realized uh, MAR. And uh, just to conclude uh, this section, we have that the parameter psi of the missing data model, as we will see, it can complicate immensely our life because it's the parameter of the missing data model. The missing data model is usually not known, so we would need to learn about the parameter that we do not have any information or we do not have much knowledge uh, about. But this parameter is the parameter of the missing data model and it has usually no scientific interest in itself because think of the case that if the data were complete we could do all our inferences and we, we wouldn't need the missing data model because there are no missing values and so we wouldn't have this parameter to worry about. So we, it would simplify our life if we could just ignore this parameter psi. But sometimes uh, this parameter may affect the um, the parameter of interest and the parameter of interest is the parameter of our data model or, and our data model is fy given theta with theta being our parameter of interest and psi is the parameter of the missing data model which is 
are given y and psi. So when we have missing data, we have these two, oops, I want it to high glide, not to erase. So we have these two quantities and it's again, sorry. Yeah, finally. We have the data model Fy given theta and the missing data model F of R given Y and Psi. And if our main interest is to learn about theta is the parameter of our data model, but because we have missing values, we have this extra complication of the missing data model. And the practical importance of the distinction that Rubin came up between the three different missing data mechanism is that he laid out the conditions that need to be verified in order to accurately estimate theta without the need to know psi. And we will look in this result later in the course when we learn likelihood-based methods for missing data, but now I will just give you the result. And uh, Rubin showed that likelihood-based analysis such as maximum likelihood or multiple imputation, a technique that we will also learn later in the course, they do not require information about psi if two conditions are met. The first one is that data are MAR or M car, and the second one is that the parameters theta and psi are distinct in the sense that the joint parameter space can be written as the product of the parameter space of each of the parameters psi and uh, theta. And Schaffer, in his book on page 11, it says that in many situations, this second condition is reasonable because usually information about Theta will not provide any information about Psi and um, vice versa. So basically we do not need to carry uh, or sorry to worry about Psi when data are MAR or MCAR but let's think about MAR as the most realistic situations and the parameters of the missing data model and of the data model are distinct, okay? And what does it mean, for instance, that they are distinct in practice? For instance, imagine that my data uh, is Bernoulli theta one, and then that my missing data mechanism is Bernoulli Theta, theta 2. In this case, the parameter of the missing data model is theta 2 and we assume theta 1 to be distinct from theta 2. So here it's uh, the two conditions are met because the parameters are distinct and data are in this case missing completely at random. And when these two conditions are met, we say that the missing data mechanism is ignorable. By some abuse of language, uh, you may see in the literature or in most of the literature, uh, researchers or authors talking about MAR data or MCAR data as ignorable missing data. But um, please be aware that it's not only being MAR or MCAR, but also that the parameters of the missing data model and of the data model, they need to be distinct. Although, as we will see also later, being MAR, it's the essential condition, but we still need the other to make valid or at least unbiased inferences. Okay, and that's everything for this part. Thank you.